It's the stuff that people dream of, winning the Triple Crown at Cheltenham, winning the Gold Cup, the Champion Chase, and of course, the wonderful Honeysuckle and the Champion Hurdle. And then on top of that, to go and win a Grand National, complete the Grand Slam, as people are now calling it. Well, we needed to find out what makes the man tick, Henry de Bromhead, down here at his base in County Waterford, with an absolute multitude of stars. So we've got to ask about last year and I mean it was building and building and building but you couldn't, nobody could have envisaged what happened. No, not at all. Um, it was uh, it was mad, the whole thing, to be honest. Um, yeah, like a similar season uh, up until then, you know, plenty of ups and downs, uh, plenty of disappointments, but uh, some nice ups to go with them. And, um, you know, we, we were going well, heading to Cheltenham, hoping for one winner as usual. And, uh, and then, um, you know, what unfolded was just incredible. Uh, then after that, a few weeks later, with the Manila Times in the national, just yeah, like it was, it was, it was a crazy few weeks. Obviously, they just everything fell right first, and um, you know, so often things go against you or whatever. You know, it was just incredible. A lot of people talk about your training methods, especially with jumpers, um, and the work that you do. We hear about you know lots of loose schooling, dressage, and things like that. Is that stuff that you kind of inherited from your dad? I know that he would he would try different things. And then did you continue in that vein or is it bits and pieces you, you picked up from other people or just from inside your own head? Bits of everything, you know, definitely dad would have had an influence. My wife, Heather, would have a huge influence, but like none of it would be achieved without the team we have here. You know, we have a great team of people with loads of experience. So, you know, you get things from them, from places where they've worked. But in terms of um, getting them jumping and the actual the various techniques you do is it a lot around the spine and bending the spine and things like that or yeah no i in my view no horse can jump if they, unless they can arch their back so i suppose yeah. with with the you know the loose schooling you're teaching them to think for themselves and get confidence for themselves and then maybe with the with the um the sort of flat work dressage work we started doing that with sizing europe and and i suppose i compare that to Pilates or um, yoga. It's all about the core and, and I think with flat work we find that can really help them. It's, it's, it's getting them to bend their back, use their um, hind end, you know, that's where all the power is coming from. One of the things that we spoke to Henry about was his training methods and the yep. way he used loose schooling and dressage. And we've got, well, a fantastic horse. Talks through the horse and, of course, the rider and exactly what's going to Well, we have Rosemary Connors here, who is in with us three mornings a week on Manila Indo, who won the Gold Cup mm. um, for us in Cheltenham. Uh, so Rose would do dressage. So different horses would do dis dressage every week. And Rose now is building up all the dressage muscles. It's really pulling the horse together and you can see how well his head is bent. She's building up all, all his top line muscles. You know, things like that you just don't get with galloping. So they end up with a lot more versatility and flexibility. Absolutely, absolutely. Henry always says it's like rugby players doing Pilates and, and yoga, but it is, it's a completely different set of muscles. It's amazing really what you have here and all these superstars. Yeah. It must be unbelievable. It is, it's, it is unbelievable. And you know, you walk around the yard and you say, it's Manila Indo and Manila Times and <laughs> Envoy and Honeysuckle. And, but at the end of the day, they they're still just horses and it's unbelievable. Now, it must have been unbelievable to win the Gold Cup. We spoke earlier on about Apple Tar finishing second, but the horse that beat him has turned out to be an unbelievable servant for you. It's still pretty young. Where to next? Back to the same place, same path? 
Yeah, ultimately it's Cheltenham in March, you know, um, but uh, he's a horse that thrives on racing. So um, he, he had a nice run first day in Down Royal. It possibly was all a little bit quick for him. And also he was a bit ring rusty, but he'll come on loads for that run. And uh, look, we haven't penciled in for the Savills or, or, or the um, King George. And uh, we'll see nearer the time where we'll go, but hopefully one or the other. And we talk about your unbelievable year, and particularly Cheltenham. There, of course, is always something that goes wrong with all these big meetings. Envoy Allen, what's the plan for him now? And where do you think he can go on to? How good could he be? We're certainly aiming for the John Durkin at the moment, which is, uh, which is great at Punchestown on the 5th. Um, of December and then um, we'll see you know he'll tell us how good he can be obviously he's been really impressive so far he was brilliant up the north um, thankfully he's back on track for us and um, uh, we'll see how he uh, progresses and I got to ask you about Rachel Blackmore and some of those rides that she gave the, gave the horses in Cheltenham were incredible but not just her skill in the saddle but also her race riding her toughness and you know, she's not going to give anybody an easy gap. She's an extraordinary jockey, isn't she? Oh, yes, she's a brilliant rider. Um, we're very lucky to have her. And, um, yeah, no, she wouldn't give an inch. You know, she's one of the top riders in, in, in England and Ireland. You know, all the success she gets, she deserves every little bit of it. She's worked so hard and, um, you know, to get to where she is. And, and yet it doesn't affect her at all. This morning, even you know, my 12 year old son has been at me for the last few months. He wanted a school, so it was Rachel who gave him all the tips and first, his first time schooling a racehorse over the hurdles. And Rachel did it all with him, you know, and, and uh, she, you know, she's very down to earth. She's a real team player. And like I say, we're very lucky to have her. Was I blown away by her at the start? Probably not in the first couple of weeks, but probably week three, week four, things started to really move along and you could just see how brilliant she was to get them to jump. And then she's just fine tuned it ever since then. You mentioned Eddie O'Leary and he was saying, he was asked about you a little while ago in a newspaper article and he said, you know, because we, we see a very affable person that we always you come across as very amiable. I have to say that because I need to get out of here. Um, but he said he's tough to the core. Does that re <laughs> really? resonate? Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, I mean, I'd take it as a compliment coming from Eddie. Um, uh, they had Chickenstown have a horse called uh, Irascible and someone suggested he was named after the racing manager. But anyhow, Eddie uh, quickly replied he was named after me. So, uh, um, I look, um, I suppose you have to be fairly tough, you know, and to sort of survive in any business. But, um, yeah, always trying to survive, anyhow. Because we asked um, to Mark Prescott, obviously you spent a couple of years with him. But we asked him about yourself and he said, well, first of all, he said, organization is not a strong point. <laughs> I don't know how that resonates with you. Yeah. And uh, he said that is probably the one thing that I taught him. Yeah, absolutely. He taught me a lot of things, but that was definitely one of them. Uh, in every evening after evening stables, 6.30 to 7.30, you write your lists for the next day. And um, yeah, look, so Mark was brilliant. Uh, and uh, and uh, his other thing was, um, he used to always call me poor Henry because uh, when he'd come over to the coursing in Clonmel, everyone he'd meet, they'd go, how's poor Henry? So, uh, so obviously I was sending home distress sing signals uh, at the time. <laughs> I'm with two stars. Obviously, we've got Bob beside us and we've got Dave. Dave, which one of you is the faster? Oh, boy, jeez. <laughs> and he's definitely a bigger star anyway. He is some star. You're the head lad, obviously, here. Um, how long have you been here? Um, 13 years. 13 for my years. sins. Since you left school? Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> we had enough punishment before that anyway. <laughs> uh, no. And tell us about this lad and this place. Oh, well, he, he's, he's just a right, he's a right horse. Um, he's very straightforward. He just loves working along and he's great, right? He is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great, right? And um, he just, he's, he's not too bad anyway. I've got to ask you about the gaffer here, the head man. What makes him so good? He just loves his job. That's, he loves doing it. And I suppose if you like doing something, you're going to get good at it. And he's very good at it. And get the horses fit and well and happy and we go from there.
talk about uh, put the kettle on. She's been unbelievable. We were fortunate enough to meet her in the stable there, and she certainly um, she lets you know it's her turf anyway, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. She's a formidable lady. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But we were very lucky to have her. And she's a very quick formidable lady. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, she's brilliant. She's brilliant. And uh, no, look, happy with the run the other day. Obviously, you always like to win, but I just think um, two very good horses in front of her, and. Last year, it's certainly the ground seemed to slow everyone down a bit for her last year. And talking about another formidable lady, obviously, Honeysuckle, she has just been incredible. I mean, I don't, you know, you don't even want to contemplate when she's ever going to get beaten. Obviously, it'll happen at some stage in her career, yeah, but yeah, the way I'm she's sure going, there's no sign of her slowing down. No, she's brilliant. She's really good. She's in great form. She worked well the other day. We're aiming for the Hatton's Grace um, uh, on the 28th at Ferry House. Uh, she's won it the last two years. Hopefully, um, you know, things will go well for her and we'll get a good run there. I've got to ask you about... Manila Times gave you one of your greatest days. I mean, that must have, would that, I presume that's the race as a kid that you would have dreamt about. When you... Yeah, absolutely. Like any of these races, you know, yeah. that, that like any of them would never have believed that we could have. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just incredible to, to think that we have. Still find it hard to believe. Um, but yeah, the, the national, like, you know, it was incredible. And, and Rachel was brilliant on him and, and you know, for the McManuses to own them and get it, you know, it's just, it was one of those great days. How do you top last year? No, you don't. If, if we can keep going as we are, not, not like last spring, wouldn't it? But if we can just keep tipping away as we are, we'll be very happy and, and uh, keep healthy and well.